up so many avenues for so many people that are still in the trade today. From the 80s point of view, it was, it was the thing that changed everything, I think, computers-wise. <laughs> MiG-1000 was such a big bombs machine, nobody sort of took it, took it seriously. But the MiG-500 was definitely the, the turning point for um, Commodore. I mean, they had had a good run with the, the Commodore 64, but the, the MiG-500 sold in its style, you know, literally hundreds of thousands, certainly in the UK and America. You had 32 colours on the original MiG-500 on the, on the screen at any one time. PCs at the time with windows and stuff were just horrendous, you know, you, it, it wasn't... Intuitive. It wasn't. It wasn't that much. That much to look at. But as soon as the Amiga workbench loaded up, you thought, "Yeah, that's amazing." So the the ST was the biggest competition at the time. You either, you either had an ST or an Amiga. You were in one camp or the other camp. Um, a lot of my friends were in the ST camp, but I preferred the Amiga. A lot of people say the ST was um, not as powerful. Um, the biggest problem between the two machines is the, the Amiga did have a dedicated um, um, co-processor and a dedicated um, sound chip, which was four channel sound. The Atari ST had an AY sound chip, which only gave it three channels, um, and the, um, it didn't have a co-processor co at the time for the, um, the graphics side of things. And when the Amiga came along, it allowed me to draw images and, um, and, and do music myself. Um, Andy Warhol um, did a, a, a very famous picture of uh, Debbie Harry and he, he said at the time that it was like having a, a, a digital form of, of, of normal media. It had four channels of stereo sound which, which made it a musician's dream. So you've got an artist's dream, a musician's dream, all in one machine that, that for £500 as it was when it first re was first released um, was a lot cheaper than a, a, a PC at the time. No matter what sort of game you in, enjoyed playing, there was a version for the Amiga, and usually two or three versions, which which helped everybody. And you, you, you know, using things like Amos, you could actually create your own game, which a lot of people did as well, and that, they were very popular as well. There were usually really really poor conversions from other systems, or um, that were created on one system and ported to another system, which sometimes doesn't work very well. The same thing happened on the Amstrad and the Spectrum. Commodore eventually went bankrupt, unfortunately, as well. And then um, that's, that's sort of the end of the Amiga. However, people have been writing emulators, and um, there's certain emulators that are absolutely fantastic to this day. And, and you're running on a, a, a good PC, and you get the Amiga experience all the time. It's a, it's a fantastic creative machine that's, that you can use for gaming and creativity.